Aloha, I'm Fire Captain Jeremy Makepa with the Kauai Fire Department here at the Kauai Community College where they do cooking demonstrations. And today we're gonna talk about fire and life safety inspections and the tips to make you succeed and have a successful inspection at your business. So general fire inspection, things that we're gonna look for is storage. Storage is a common one. So let's start in the storage room and we can show you a little bit of what we're looking for um, when you store your stuff. Really good housekeeping in this closet. Nice and clean storage, separations. What we look for is the ceiling height between your storage items. The reason we look for that is when the sprinklers go off in this room, if there was a fire, there would be a pattern that comes out to cover everything. So if your ceiling height is too high, then the water won't be able to put stuff out on the top shelves. So what we're looking for again is 18 inches if you have a sprinkler in there or 24 inches if not. So we're looking for that. Also, if you have an alarm system in here, it should have strobes in your closets, just like we have on this wall to notify you if you're working in here. The flashing light will let you know that there's an emergency to get out of this room. Another common violation is electrical wiring. So as you can see on this appliance, we have electrical wiring that is correctly plugged directly into an outlet. Sometimes these are set up um, further from an outlet and they use extension cords that is not allowed. There's too much load between an appliance and the outlet to get with an extension cord. So please make sure that these are plugged directly into the outlet. We'll also look behind your appliances to make sure that everything is safe. As you can see on these appliances, we have gas powers for these, um, these ones that are set up here. On a hood system like this, whenever there's an emergency, the shutoff should automatically shut your gas down. Or if you have electrical appliances, it'll shut down the electric. And when you pull our emergency release button, that will shut it all down automatically. One of the most important features in your kitchen is this kitchen hood system. Um, commonly, fires in restaurants happen somewhere near the cooking areas. Um, so when you're cooking, a lot of the grease collects and goes up into your hood vent and out the building. So we need to make sure this system is clean and, and maintained so that none of that grease can build up and catch fire within your vents. In this vent system, there's also a fusible link that in case there's a fire, it would automatically melt and trigger these extinguishing pipes to put the fire out on your appliances. So we wanna make sure that's well maintained. And all of these baffles you see here that catch the grease that you can take out, wanna make sure those are all clean regularly. And there's a pan at the end here that collects grease. Wanna make sure that those are taken out regularly so that this is all clean and maintained. So once those are maintained, these pipes which would disperse our extinguishing agent, we wanna make sure they're centered onto your appliance. So this appliance is slightly off to the left. So this one would need to be moved and centered. And this pipe as well is slightly off to the left. So if it did disperse, it would possibly not catch this side, so we wanna move this and center it. Another thing I noticed with this system is it should have caps on these to protect it from any grease going up and clogging these pipes. So we need to get that, that fixed. Looking at this fryer, this deep fryer, if you're within another cooking appliance, this is just a table, you would need some kind of baffling um, wall here probably about eight inches, I think is the height, to protect anything from splashing this way, or if it was right next to the grill, 
heated items going that way. So we would be looking for some kind of baffle here. Because we have this in the way, <clears throat> the distance here is enough that we don't need the baffling on that one. The other thing we would be looking for is when was the last time this system was maintained and clean because we want to make sure that that vent system was well taken care of. So we'll be looking for a sticker somewhere along this edge that lets us know somebody who is certified to clean this has done so. And we see it here that this was inspected and they've done this in accordance with NFPA 96. Once we find the sticker saying that your system is tagged and ready, we want to make sure that it's done at regular intervals. So this can be done as needed depending on how much grease-laden vapors are being produced at your restaurant. So it has to be done at a minimum of every six months, but if too much buildup is happening, you may need to have it done more regularly. When our inspectors get to your business, please have your fire suppression system documentation ready for us to inspect. You should receive this whenever one of the fire protection contractors comes and does maintenance on your system so that we can check if there were any deficiencies that need to be followed up upon. So what do you do if your kitchen does catch on fire? Well, you're gonna go find one of these, which would automatically activate the system. So what we're looking for on this system is that it was tagged and inspected so that it does work when you need it on the right time. When you do need it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the pin out from this system and then you're gonna pull this handle and what'll happen is <clears throat> it'll trigger the fire suppression system within your hood and we can tell that this one is already set with that green indicator on the top saying that it's set. What'll happen is you trigger it, the compressed gas will push all of the wet chemicals out of this system and it would go through the piping and then expel down on your appliances where the fire is at over here. So that's why we wanna make sure that this once it goes all through the piping, it can come out and expel directly on your fire. All right, in case we miss some of the fire and you see that our agent has not put everything out, you'll need to find your fire extinguisher. So the first thing we'll be looking for is that you have clear access around this. Yeah, and you should have clear access around your activation pin as well. So what we're looking for, this one is nice and mounted. Um, it has to be at least four inches off the ground, maximum height, five feet on this thing. Making sure that everything looks ready. It's tagged by a certified contractor that they already checked it. The indicator is in the green, saying that this thing is charged and ready. We wanna make sure that you can easily access this when you get there. As you can see, the hose is in the wrong position on this one, so you can't get it out. So we wanna make sure that this hose is actually behind that pin so that when you need this to put out the fire, you can easily take it out, pull it open, and you would use our pass system, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep, to put the fire out on your way out to the exit. And we're ready to go. For the safety of your employees and guests, you should develop an emergency plan on how to get out and where all of the emergency devices are, such as fire extinguishers and alarms, if you have them. So whoever comes out to meet us can let us know the best way to get in and put out the fire to mitigate your situation and keep your business safe, your employees safe, and your guests safe. Aloha.